small cell lung cancer. Small cell lung cancer is defined as the malignant neuroendocrine epithelial pulmonary tumor consisting of the small cell with the scanned cytoplasm, ill default cell borders, finely glandular nuclear chromatin, and absent in conspicuous nuclei. The small cells can be round over or spindle shape. The small cell lung cancer was his- historically known as oat cell carcinoma. Macroscopically, small cell cancers are often friable white tan tumors that can be extensively necrotic. Histologically, the small cell cancer is positive for neuroendocrine markers such as chromogranin CD54 thyroid transcription factor 1 in 90% of the patients. Not a small cell lung cancer represents any epithelial tumors. Without the small cells include adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Small cell lung cancers are a common type of lung cancer generally comes under the spectrum of neuroendocrine lung neoplasm. They are highly aggressive cancer. Small cell lung cancer present uh, around 20% of the lung cancers in Europe and USA. As many other forms of the lung cancer, the most cases occur between 35 to 75 years of age. But usually common in elderly age group. So the risk factors including tobacco use, which is predominant cause of a small cell lung cancer, with 98% of the patients having a smoking history, uranium mining, and exposure to Rendon gas. The paraneoplastic syndrome. Uh, are associated with this cancer and triggered by a non-metastatic effect of malignant tumor caused by the direct related or hormone prepared by a tumor. Syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone which occurs 10 to 45 percent of patients with small cell lung cancer Cushing syndrome which occurs in 2 to 5 percent of the patients with small cell lung cancer is caused by excessive adenocorticotropic hormone production. lambert eaton syndrome which occurs in 3% of the patients with small cell lung cancer. Clinical features include dyspnea, hemoptysis, cough, wheeze, and pneumonia. Constitutional symptoms include weight loss and fatigue, compression, local structures, the facial upper limb swelling due to severe vena cable obstruction, strider use due to tracheal obstruction, dysphagia due to facial obstruction, force voice due to recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement, dyspnea due to phrenic nerve involvement. Metastatic symptoms, the cerebral dizziness, headache, nausea and vomiting, or the neurological defects, the bone pain, pathological fractures, spinal cord neurological deficit, hepatic abdominal pain, and jaundice. In the investigation include radiology, histology as the mainstay of diagnosis of small cell lung cancer, some blood tests can be used to detect the metastatic paraneoplastic disease, the full blood count, the pancytopenia may indicate the presence of the bone marrow involvement. Urea electrolyte and creatinine, the serum sodium levels, hyponatremia may indicate the presence of high ADH, and serum potassium levels, hypokalemia may indicate the presence of Cushion syndrome. Liver function tests which may be abnormal in the presence of hepatic metastasis, the serum calcium and alkaline phosphatase levels may be raised by the presence of bone metastasis. The chest radiograph may demonstrate the presence of primary tumor, hyalur mediastinum or parenchymal mass, lymph node involvement, hyalur enlargement, metastatic disease deposit in the ipsilateral or contralateral lung, cruel effusion, obstructive pneumonia or telectasis. A computerized tomography scan of the thorax abdomen and pelvis including the liver and adrenal glands to determine the site. Uh, size, extent, local spread of the primary lesion, lymph node involvement, presence of metastatic disease including liver, bone, spinal cord, and adrenals. The MRI imaging of the brain to detect the presence of the cerebral metastasis which occur in 10 to 15 percent of patients with a small cell lung cancer. Positron emission tomography is combination of the CT scanning which should be performed in the patient being considered for the surgery or radical therapy to detect the presence of metastatic disease. Bone scan which should be performed in patient 
with the warm symptoms pain fracture the presence of disease even calcium or alp to detect the presence of bone metastasis the staging is based on the history examination symptoms and signs of the primary lymph node involvement in metastatic disease the blood tests including the fcc ue LFT serum calcium and ALP radiological imaging include CT thorax abdomen pelvis MRI brain pet CT the American Joint Cancer Committee Union International adopted the seven edition of the TNM staging system proposed by International Association of the Lung Cancer treatment decision involves or is still often used previously staging system The AGC tumor uh, classification including TX, the primary tumor, T0, not no evidence of primary tumor, TS carcinoma in C2, T1 tumor less than 3 cm, T1A tumor less than 3 cent, 2 cm in greater diameter, T1B tumor more than 2 cm but, uh, but less than 3 cm in greater dimension, T2 is tumor between 3 and 5 cm. Uh, T2A tumor between 3 and 5 centimeters in greater dimension, T2B tumor between 5 and 7 centimeters in greater dimension, T3 tumor more than 7 centimeters, T4 tumor of any size that invades the following with the asthma, regional left node annex, regional left node cannot be assessed and zero, no regional left node metastasis, add one metastasis on the ipsilateral, peribronchial and ipsilateral hyaline left node. And two metastases in ipsilateral mediastinal and subcarinal lymph node, and three metastases in contralateral mediastinal or contralateral hyla or scalene or supracarinal lymph node. M0 no distant metastases, M1 distant metastases, M1A separate tumor nodules, M1B distant metastases. The VALGS is the Veteran Administrative Lung Cancer Study Group Staging System. It's a limited stage which represents tumors that can be encompassed into the reasonable radiation. Extensive stage which indicates the tumor burden that cannot be encompassed into reasonable radiation field. Essentially, the limited stage represents M0 according to TNM system and extensive disease M1. Only exception is T4 involving separate tumor nodule and different ipsilateral load. Management including the bronchoscopic biopsy, brushing, final respiration, feeding cytology, CG diet biopsy. To the limited stage study broadly T1 to 4 and 0 and 0, the platinum based combination chemotherapy, classic radiotherapy. Concurrent for the patient with good performance status, sequential for the patient with poor performance status. T1, 2A, N0, M0, the surgical resection with multimodality treatment, extensive disease chemotherapy without thoracic radiotherapy, in addition to prophylactic training radiation, should be offered to the patient with limited extensive stage disease who have had the resection or achieved a comp complete. Response to the initial therapy, relapsed refractory SCLC and their further chemotherapy but poor prognosis. Cerebral spinal metastasis, high dose corticosteroids. The management of uh, the principle of surgery uh, considered as the Systemic disease resection may have some patients with limited disease. Most of the evidence regarding surgery is the part of the treatment. In SCLC is the form of historical data. The majority of the recent data is from the reports of the series reporting survival as high as 52%. Patients with biopsy proven T1 to 2A and 0 and 0 tumors should be considered for surgery only if the negative notes have been confirmed. Although two phases Three trials of the surgery arose in combination with chest radiotherapy showed the survival advantage compared to radiotherapy alone. Further review of these trials indicate that the role of the surgery may have been underestimated and the resection was not complete in all the patients assigned to the surgery. 
Retrospective data suggests that the surgery can lead to local control and improved survival in the selected patient with stage 1 to 3 SCLC. The current guidelines from the BTS and National Institute of Health and Child Excellence recommends the surgery should be considered as a part of multimodality treatment in patients with T1, 2A and not M0. The adjuvant chemotherapy is recommended in all patients who undergo surgery followed by PCR. Chemotherapy used in patients with limited stage disease, thoracic radiotherapy, extensive stage SCLC without thoracic radiotherapy, relapsed refractory SCLC, T12A and not M0 SCLC is adjuvant therapy following surgical resection. The standard treatment regime is usually 4 to 6 cycles of cisplatin and etoprocyte. The cisplatin is replaced with carboplatin in home with the impaired renal function, poor performance status, WHO2 or more a significant comorbidity. The prognosis of the patient with SCLC, the overall 5-year survival of the patient with SCLC is 5 to 10. At the time of presentation, more than 60% of the patients have disseminated disease. The median survival in the presence of extensive disease is 6 to 12 months and the treatment is 2 to 4 months without treatment. Median survival to limited is 18 to 24 months with the 5-stage survival disease is 14%. Predictors of the poor prognosis include poor performance status, weight loss, as well as presence of extensive disease. It is important to note that the publication of survival according to the stage may subject to selection bias and they may tend to include only the patient with good performance status. Thank you.